Hello everybody, welcome to season two, episode 25 of the Hard Truth Inside the Football Industry podcast with me, Philip Eidson, and Darren McAnthony, chairman and co-owner of Peterborough United. And we're recording this on a Friday, a little bit different from our usual schedule. Uh, we didn't record earlier in the week for obvious reasons. Why? Is anything going yeah. on this week? <laughs> anything out of the ordinary for both our clubs? You were a little bit busy, I think, earlier in the as, week. As were you guys. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're recording on Friday because you're off on uh, a long-deserved, I think, vacation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I leave for Dubai tomorrow night. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, looking forward to it two weeks away. So, today, I think, is going to be about managers. Okay. So, uh, you know, obviously, we both had a change of manager in the last week. I think, ironically, both announced our new managers pretty much the same time um, yesterday. Let's talk about Posh. Sure. Um, Where do you want to start? Can you, so, kind of give us a timeline of Darren and Darren leaving and kind of how that how that went down. So, obviously chatted with a gaffer after the Derby game on Saturday. Um, you know, we lost again in the 92nd minute or whatever it was. Spoke to him on the way home. He was in his car driving back. Uh, could tell he was down. Um, so, didn't keep him on, you know, he rang me, didn't keep him on too long. Just mm-hmm. checking, you okay? You know, not a lot to say. You know, first time been like that for a while, so I was like, okay. I mean, obviously losing the card was bad, but we didn't really speak till the next day. And, yeah. You know, he kind of cleared it out of his system. But so, yeah, that was that was interesting. So I was like, okay, look, you get home, you know, to the missus, and and uh, you know, speak tomorrow, catch up tomorrow. Sunday morning, I woke up. Uh, my wife was away with my daughter at a volleyball tournament in Tampa, so I'm looking after the other two kids, mm-hmm. and I woke up at about eight thirty. Usually I won't wake up till half nine, ten on a Sunday morning, you know, I'll be lying. So I was like, up early, I was going to take the kids for breakfast. And obviously you always check your phone when you wake up. Yeah. Being five hours behind England, and yeah. it was like two messages from the manager. You know, chairman, can you speak? So I'm like, you know, usually it would take me to text the manager on a Sunday to remind him mm-hmm. we're having a chat today. So I jumped in the shower. And uh, while I'm in the shower, I put my phone over there so I can see it if it rings. Yeah. And there he is ringing me on the phone. So I'm thinking in the shower, this isn't good. Yeah. You know, part of me is thinking, okay, we've got an issue here. So obviously a guy out of shower, made a coffee, rang him back. And I was like, Gaff, you okay? He was like, Chairman, um, I just want to, you know, tell you, I want to I wanna leave. And I went, fuck, what, what? He goes, I want to leave. And I said, no, don't do this to me now. And, he, and I'm thinking in my head, I wish you'd done it four fucking games ago, because mm-hmm. right now is like the wrong time. Um, and he was like, no. And he's like, I'm, I want to leave. And again, you know, a bit of a warning. I, I I want to give Grant McCann time, you know, to get into this. So yeah. I really ask and implore the media, who aren't my biggest fans at the moment, to stop with the sensational headlines, stop with headlines that are trying to create problems or issues. I don't want that for Grant, the new staff, the team. So don't take anything from this podcast and start putting it out there. It, it, you're not working in the club's favour by, by taking tidbits of what I say. Yeah, out of context. Out of context, because it's just like I'm, I'm fed up with it. So enough already. Um, so I just said to Darren is, are you sure this is something you want to do you know I get it it's not great but look we've got a plan this is what we're going to do because obviously I've been very strong and wanted to support him mm-hmm. you know Jason and Randy the same and he was just there was no talking him down so I said um, so you're resigning and he said yeah and he said how do you want to handle it media wise and I said well let me speak to my partners and then obviously I have to liaise with the club it's Sunday morning I've got my children I've yep. got plans to do but obviously I've got to sing into yeah, drop everything I've got to pivot to yeah. do this and do whatever so I rang Natalie I said look I, you know, I know you're going to be updating me on the volleyball but I'm going to be able to take your calls because I'm going to be now I said he's, he's resigned and she's like you're joking me I said no and she goes fuck okay I understand I'll get on with what I'm doing so then I reach out to Jason he's at a Leeds game a Premier League game but it just started Randy's obviously 5 o'clock in the morning in Canada so I'm trying to liaise with the two of them. So I'm saying to Jason, you need to ring me at half time. You know, this has happened. Randy, this has happened. Um, what do you want to do? And the discussion then is, you know, what are we doing here? You know, are we are we going down the road of temporary manager? Are we going down the road of an Allardyce Warnock? Are we going down, not saying either of them would call, yeah. but what, what are we doing? Yeah. Um, so there Short was like, term, long yeah, term. So there's all different opinions. Yeah. It's difficult. One person's in England, one person's in Canada, one person's in America. So, you know, I'm trying to... Obviously, I've got to ring Barry, Liz, explain to them. I've got to keep tell our press officer just to stay available because, you know, we're probably going to put something out at like six, seven o'clock in the mm-hmm. evening. The manager wanted it out. Then we need to liaise with him and his lawyers to make sure everything's fine with how it's... This is how it's done. Whilst my mind is scrambled and obviously I'm disappointed. So... 
you know, obviously the partners, we spoke about it, and then, you know, who's available, who's not available, what do we want? So if we're going to go with someone similar, if we're going to go, if we're going to be in League One again, and, you know, the odds are we, we could yeah. be, and you have to plan for that eventuality in plan B mode, as well as praying plan A happens, mm -hmm. you know, we want to try and win the league, we want to try and win promotion without the bravado, that, that's what we want to do, um, and we have a pretty good squad, um, so you'd, you'd, you'd fancy that. Yeah. So, well, hey, who won the league one last time recently? Oh, hang on, Grant McCann. Who beat us to the playoffs before that? Hang on, Grant McCann. Who does the club know? You know, I, yeah. I, I put Grant in as our 15s manager. I hired him as our assistant manager for Dave Robertson, assistant for Graham Wesley, and then I put him up as manager. Grant will always admit, you know, back in the day, our biggest thing we missed out on was his number two that he got at Doncaster. Mm -hmm. He was at Sunderland, and he wasn't even Sunderland. They were in the Premier League. He was in a youth role, but getting paid very well. And I always wanted Grant to have a really hard core number two, and he never did with us. When he left, he got him, and he, they became a really good team. Yeah. And I was always in my mind that, you know, if we were, and I, I said to my partners, we were talking about the Grant thing, and, you know, we collectively we were like, I said to them, look, do you want me to make the call? But you have to be sure. I mm -hmm. said, if I make the call and chat, the next thing will be we all have to get in Zoom tomorrow so you guys can feel him out. Because they've never really met him. Yes, yeah. they've met him at football, but they've never talked football, the job, the club. So they were like, yeah, do that. I knew Grant was with his parents in, in Belfast. So I messaged him and said, look, you, you up for a chat? He messaged me and said, I'm just out for dinner with my folks. Give me an hour and I'll call you. So he called me and I said, so our manager's left. I'm sure you've heard the news. These things get out there quickly and I said would you be up for a conversation with my partners forget me mm -hmm. would you be up for a chat with them and I said you know what do you think of our club he goes well my sons are in the academy you know I know what's going on with the academy you know he knows three or four of the young players in yeah. our squad he had them as 15 year olds when he was the coach of the 15s and he said to be honest with you chairman we tried to recruit most of the players you signed in the summer he said you and Baz beat us to it so we couldn't pay fees and you paid fees mm -hmm. we tried to sign at least seven of them I said well that's going to go down well with all the anti-Dara recruitment haters out there but anyway so I said let's cool I said um, and, and by the way we would want your number two and he goes well that's great to hear because you know he has to come yeah. I said totally understand so I said let me um, let me speak to my partners it's tired time now for Zoom on Monday so then it's trying to I'm then trying to get the press release out for Darren so we wrote that up that was done and then I'm trying to organise because Randy's flying from Canada to England. Jason had the dome opening. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to tie down everyone on a call. Grant's flying back from Belfast. Time is of the essence for me because yeah. we've got a lot of things going on. Is there ever a chance? And I'd said to Grant, do you think we have a chance? And he said, yes. But of course, there's no promises. You right. take it a game at a time. I said, okay, fine. That's all I want to hear. Some of us think we don't. So that's that's good to hear. So, um and you know me, I'm very business and matter of fact and very efficient the way I go about things. So anyway, I got the Zoom call linked in. Baz was on the Zoom call. Randy, fair play to Randy. He's flying with Tina, his wife. Yeah, he did it from the car on the way to the airport. Jason stepped away from the dome. Grant's just got back from baggage handling issues with his luggage mm -hmm. and Stansted or wherever he flew into. You know, I'm in the States. I'm trying to put all this together. So we have a Zoom call. And I started the Zoom call and said, look, I'm going to go mute. I'm going to stay out of this. Grant knows me. I know Grant. Yep. It's really important. Jason, Randy, you ask Grant what you want to ask Grant. Get into it, the nitty gritty, ask him about what's happened the last few years. So then Grant explained to them his, his four years in management from when we fired him mm -hmm. to taking over Doncaster with very low budget, getting them in the playoffs, going to Hull, selling yep. his two best players, getting relegated, rebuilding from relegation to winning League One, having a transfer embargo, more ownership issues, a new owner coming in, beating the top two teams in the championship, Mm -hmm. getting hauled to pretty much safety by the time he left and then been bombed out of there so he's had all this happen in his four years of management for a 40 odd year old manager was a good story yep. and he's dealt with COVID you know, yep. you know no fans all the yep. deals with COVID so Randy asked some good questions Jason obviously pretty much knew you know Jason's very youth orientated anyway so he just spoke to Grant about that the, the academy Randy obviously had a few questions about look you know you've been here before you know, what do you think? The squad, the this, the that, your staff. This Grant had a hell of a lot of staff at Hull. Hull's a bigger club than us. With all due respect, regardless of being in League One, they were in the Premier League like five years right. ago. You know, it's a big club. And he wasn't a skint member either with the contracts he was on. Mm -hmm. Neither was his assistant. So I'm getting a message on the Zoom call from my partners going, 
can you close this deal and get them hired? So okay, come off the Zoom call. I said to them, right, my timeline will be, and I now have to negotiate. Unfortunately, Grant's got an agent, his assistant's got an agent. A lot of the managers I've hired haven't had agents, mm -hmm. but now you're dealing with someone who's a title winner, coming from a good yeah. club. You know, this isn't going to be as easy as getting it done in an hour. So obviously I said to Grant, look, I'm going to reach out to your agents, you know, and, and I knew the agents as well. And for, well, I'm going to say, unfortunately, I'm not slagging anyone's agent off. I've, I deal with all agents. And Just dealing with, having to deal with these agents. These two agents have players at our club. Yeah. You know, coincidentally, like a lot of agents do. So I knew them. So then there's me and Barry going to them. Liz was absolute fucking godsend during the process, but she is to the formality, the contracts, deal with lawyers, everything. So, and Liz is your company secretary, yeah, uh, club she, secretary, she, I'm she's sorry. She's more than a secretary, she's yeah. brilliant. She's basically like Barry's, you know, I wouldn't say assistant, partner and helping yeah. do everything and formalise everything. She's a very important cog in the wheel and I'm always very appreciative to her. So basically Monday and Tuesday was me here in my office here at 7, 8 at night, Liz in England up till 11, 12, Baz in and out on the phone, you know, whatever else. and going backwards and forwards I ended up then going backwards to the agents directly particularly Grant's one just about stuff you know it's the most expensive management team we've ever hired mm -hmm. people want to say about cheap option you're getting somebody who's just won the league title someone who's done well in the championship they ain't coming cheap someone who's in demand too and who's in demand who's, who's basically Sunderland offered a job too but it wasn't yeah. a long enough contract yeah. someone who's in demand so this wasn't cheap so I'm navigating and negotiating all of that Monday night couldn't get it done Tuesday it was still going on. Then it was the agents wanted the LMA to study the contracts. Mm -hmm. So at this stage, there's no way he's in charge for Fulham. And I don't blame him either, by the way. Not, you know, I'm not saying he didn't want to be in charge for Fulham. <laughs> you don't want to get stuffed in your first game. No, in but my plan with him and, and Cliffy was, let's get it all done by Wednesday morning. And I want you boys in the director's box Wednesday night. I said, Thursday morning, you're going to come in. You're going to, you know, fresh page. You're going to meet the staff. You're going to get into the players. You're going to take training, see another 23 game. I'll organize a press conference, four o'clock. Oh, yeah, he's out with Jason Randy. But I want, I said, I want you two in the director's box at Fulham. I want, I want mm -hmm. the players to see it. I want people to see it. I think it's a good thing. But you're not going to be in it until you're signed before you get in that box. So, so then it all starts breaking and leaking and whatever. But we got there in the end. It was a hard negotiation. It was a tough one. Fair play. When you rate yourself and you, you, your star shining light, Grant's learnt, obviously. You know, you, you, you got to make hay while the sun shines. So, yeah. no problem with that. We'd have compromised. They compromised. We compromised. And we're very happy with the structure of the deal, whether it's plan A, plan B, mm -hmm. we have a good management team. And the rest down the line we'll visit come the summertime about other bits and pieces. Right now it's him and, and the assistant, they're a team, they're a great team. And I spoke to both of them after the Fulham game. They, funny enough, I spoke to them on the Tuesday when they were driving back from the Hull Barnsley game. And I spoke to them on the Wednesday night when they were traveling back from the Fulham game. They wanted to give me their insights. I hadn't really ever met Cliff before, so yeah. again, it was like chatting. I was dropping like my daughter off to volleyball. I'm sat in the car outside in the speakerphone talking to the two of them about you know Fulham, the players, mm -hmm. the performance, and then they were just excited about getting in on Thursday. And obviously, I said to Jason and Randy, "It's all set up, you know, for Thursday. Your press conference. You're going to be in the box at Fulham with them, and you know, really looking forward. It's a new era." And I said, it'd be great. You, you know, Randy had said to me, did you want to fly over? And I was like, no. I said, I'm going away on Saturday. You know, I've been in England for six weeks. I can get all of this done remotely. That's one of my skill sets. I can get it done. I said, it'd be great, I think, for you and Jason to be with Grant. Yeah. I said, it's like fresh. It's nice. The toxicity, the moaners, the this, the that, the pressure around me at the moment. I thought, let them two be with Grant. Uh, and then I listened to the, um, the Fulham game. You know, obviously I had it on my TV, but you got BBC, unfortunately, it's the only commentary that's on unless ESPN have it, yeah. I would prefer ESPN. Obviously then BBC Cambridge commentary before the game. And I said to my wife that night, I'm just like, you know, I'm, I'm deflated the way, like, you know, press who I've been very good to over the years, like, speak about me. Because they were giving you stick on recruitment, right? You've heard it, so, <laughs> yeah. yes, absolutely. It's, um, you know, again, the same old bullshit about the recruitment, about, you know, it needs to change, about this, about that, and you know, Ben, whatever his name is, and the other guy, you know, it's just a constant, like, knock, knock, knock. And, you know, maybe it'd be great for Grant to have a fresh approach. And, yeah, I'd said last week in the podcast, we're open to everything, but it's just like sticking a knife in all mm -hmm. the time. Um, and, and the funny thing is, is, like, for two days, inundated from Sky, BT, BBC, um, the bigger BBC, not the local one, and, yeah. um, you know, talk sport. And I, I had none of it. I didn't want to talk to anyone. I was like, I said to Jason and Randy, you guys can carry all the press thing. I'll just stay out of it. But I'm listening to that, and it's just, yet yeah, a constant, like, knife in you know what I mean and uh, even Gabby Saquani dived in which is funny enough he'd messaged me the day before for like some work or could he help out or come in and you know again and you're just like Jesus Christ like really 
you like, you know, about my loud <laughs> Everyone's voice. Everyone's after and, you. <laughs> yeah, and like one of them like called me a salesman. And mm. I said to my wife, I said like, and I know this sounds conceited and arrogant, Phil, but like the last time I was a salesperson, I was 21. At 23, I was earning more in a week than these guys earned in a year. Mm -hmm. So the disrespect to call me a salesman, like, you know, who the fuck did I think they are? You know what I mean? And they wouldn't have the balls to fucking call it to my face. So this stuff's just riling me up, like riling me up. I'm, I'm fucking, I'm, I've had enough. You know, the press, and I don't just mean them. I mean, everyone locally who mm -hmm. I've been good to for 15 years with access, never ever put them under pressure about what to write, what to say, like some clubs do. Never banned them, never would. It's not my thing. Freedom of speech is fine. But I'm just saddened that they've turned that way. So I mean? quickly too, right? So quickly too, yes. Yeah. So it's like, but that's fine. Fuck you. You know, I've, I'm one of those guys. My memory's as long as my dick goes on forever. Um, and that won't be forgotten. So so how important was it for Jason and Randy to be... Because obviously Grant was somebody you hired and you've yeah. you've um, mentored uh, yeah. through the, the ranks. Yeah. And so, you know... And, it's and, and after he left... Right. I helped him prep for the Donny interview. Mm -hmm. I was in Hawaii on holiday. Do you know what I mean? I you know, spoke to him when he won the league title for Hull. You know, joked by text. You know what I mean? He was just saying, you bastard. You know, and he was mm -hmm. saying, well, you know, uh, as you said, I need to toughen up when I left. <laughs> spoke to him when he was in for the Sunderland job. Put him in for the Bradford right. job. You, you, you know, look, I've always loved him. I love his family. Just because I fired him. I mean, by the way, three of our ex-managers begged me for the job over the weekend. Yeah. These people have this perception of me of being this, like, big bad guy. And it's like... People don't want to work for him, or he has his personality. And why do these all these ex managers want to work for me? Ask well, yourself the question. Well, because of that history, it's important for Jason and Randy to really be driving that recruitment so, as well, right? So, so, you know, for them, I wanted them to spend time with them on Wednesday at Fulham. I wanted them to spend time with them on Thursday today. I think it's great for them to get in there, you know, and, and, and forge relationships with Grant. You know, that's the most important thing for me now. Great. Get relationships going. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'll stay the fuck out of it. Do you know what I mean? So, and, and of course, fair play to Grant. I'd said to him on Wednesday, I said, you know, get on with it. You don't need to hear from me. You know, we can speak whenever you want. And, but, you know, him being him, he rang me after yesterday's first day in the gig and he was on his way to pick his folks up at the airport and we had a good chat for half an hour about the day in a press conference. And, you know, and I, that was nice. Mm -hmm. But I'm not asking. I'm just like, you know, I'll leave you to it. You know what I mean? Kind of thing. So, anyway, um, it was all wrapped up, all done. All formalized and yeah, I'm ready to go on holiday on Saturday and good luck to everyone. So, you know, um, yeah. So so what's Grant's short term remit then? Is it, you know, you, you still want to get every point on the board you can get, you know? It's, it's, it, it, I think like he said, it's like game by game. Yeah. I think it's real remit. It's like yesterday we were speaking about stuff that was non-result uh, related, you know, food, you know, sports science, uh, chef, the training ground. You know, Grant's words to me where you've got a lot of million, millions and millions of pounds of talent here. Yeah. You know, and we have to get that right. Give them everything without spoiling them, but making mm -hmm. sure they work for everything and programs. And, you know, without a doubt, we can talk recruitments, a conversation we put to the side. You know, we, our fitness this season, things like that. All the yeah. things that we could improve on. We haven't been at our best things that off the pitch could have been better. Um, so we were having those conversations and it's it was good to hear because he... he he has matured. He's very different four years ago. Uh, and I liked hearing that. And I said to him, I, I will do everything in my power to help and get you things, but we're not whole. We're not. We, we'll do everything within our power, yeah. within our reason to do what we can do. You know, I always, every manager has always had every tool I can give them yeah. if they want them. So it was good to hear all of that. His remit's very simple. Come in, do what you can with an eye on next season either way. An eye on our squad, an eye on what we have, an eye on what's in the building, an eye on the under 23s. The 23s battered Burnley as they 5 2. Mm -hmm. Half of them weren't, they were like kids. They weren't even like squad players. You know, young Joe Taylor yep. has already been, you know, training with the first team based in Innsbruck. I said to you, he's like the next Craig McHale Smith, mm -hmm. 19. He would have scored 20 goals for Bradford in his sleep. Um, he did brilliant, you know, absolutely destroyed Burnley. We're into the next round of like the Premier League Cup, you know, for the 23s. So I just said to the gaffer, you and Cliffy have to get an overview of everything. Everything that's good, everything that's not so good. Ideas, you know, you're driving this. You know, Baz is there as usual to support you. You know, at the end of the day, you know, everyone wants this mass change about how we do things, but he's very happy with the players. He, yep. he, a lot of the players he likes a lot, you know what I mean? So don't forget, like, you know, the recruitment at Hull and Peter for the last two years has been very similar. Mm -hmm. He did learn from the best. 
and well, you know he, that's a challenge players. now you're pitting now and he's, he's going players. against your own players yeah he we took some of his he yeah. took some of ours it's always been very similar you know what I mean so that's just been the way and we both finished one and two in league one yeah so and he said to me on the phone that with our squad we should have finished probably even higher than Hull with yeah. the recruitment we did in the summer so that wasn't a slight on Hull it was just that he had an embargo in the summer mm -hmm. you know we were able to sign players with fees yeah you know that he wanted Norburn, you know, players yeah. like that, you know, Josh Knight, you know, he couldn't pay the fees. Yeah. So, you know, uh, again, we can talk about recruitment at a later date, but, you know, we've underperformed. And and again, that's not me taking a knock on the gaff, the ex-gaffer, you know, how I feel about him. Yeah. But at the end of the day, he, he, he resigned. And whilst I was angry the first couple of days, I respect now he's done it. Yeah. Because he knew I probably wouldn't make the decision yeah. to sack him. And he's probably done me a favour. He took it out of your hands. Yeah, in the club, yeah. yeah. So I love him for that. I respect him for that. I wish him and Nicola nothing but the best. Um, but sad. But that's just the way life is. That's football. Mm -hmm. um, and now we've got a new era. And there's a lot to get excited about. And look, the majority of fans are very happy with Grant coming back. You're always going to have your moaners about you. So, you know, Dara's only got two numbers in his phone. Somebody posted yesterday, you've only got two numbers in your <laughs> phone. I was only going to go back and say, yeah, your mom's and your wife's. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, I'll leave it. I'll just... I'll just I'll just leave Keep it yourself alone. off Twitter yeah. for a little yeah, while. Yeah, yeah, I'll leave it. You know, I'm just like, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it. I'm going on holiday tomorrow. So I'll let them all enjoy their, yeah. you know, they got a big Man City game, they got a game tomorrow, they got whatever else. And I'll be, you know, this might be our last podcast, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, I'll just I'll go on holiday for a couple of weeks. And, uh, you know, and that's not me having to go, you, or whatever else. You're going to get, just, you're firing the podcaster as well. <laughs> I'm not firing anyone. I'm just like, you know, let me get a break for a couple of weeks. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? And whatever, you know, listen still do the podcast but you know I'm, the way I'm feeling today yeah. it's like need a couple of weeks so just uh, replenish refresh and, and get on with it you know because mm -hmm. it's been it's been a bit heavy like and, 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 and look I'll, I'll always take responsibility for mistakes but some of it's just been like OTT yeah. you know in my opinion such you know I mean? is the world right yeah, now unfortunately isn't it yeah. I mean yeah. we've certainly seen that at City um, and 100% you know, a lot of people feel entitled to opinions, and uh, everyone's allowed an opinion. Yeah, whether or not not allowed is, they're not allowed an attack. They're allowed an opinion. They're not allowed an attack that suits a narrative. Do you know what I mean? And you have to be very careful. People are human beings. I'm strong. I'm thick-skinned, so I can take it. You know, but you just keep going and keep going and keep going. I sound like I'm crying about these fucking idiots mm -hmm. at the BBC or whatever else. Look, BBC for years chased me even in real estate long before I came into Peterborough. So whatever, do you know what I mean? At the end of the day, they're one of our sponsors. I don't give a fuck. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, they want to be like that. That's on them. Yeah. They need me more than I need them. I don't fucking need them, you know? But at the end of the day, at times something needs to be said. And the toxicity just gets too much. And I hate to see some of the older fans who are fighting on social media, the corner of a Darren and a me, mm -hmm. whatever. And I feel for them. Because you got 60, 70, 80 year old men and women who are like genuinely upset yeah. and love their football club. And then you got these little nineteen and twenty year old newbies who don't know any different, who are just like driving the driving that agenda. Trolling them. And I get it, you know, this is the way of the world. Yeah. How better would the world be without Facebook, Twitter, Instagram Absolutely. and all of this if mm -hmm. we didn't have it? How better would the world be? I'm just asking that question yeah, generally. I do feel it would be better. Because we and, see it, you know, we've had Oh I've I've read know, it. Campaigns Look, You to, know I'm a Bradford fan now. Right. And I read, you, I read your rap match reports. I have like updates and goals in the Bradford games. Mm -hmm. I read in the, you know, not too many forums because I, I decided years ago to stop with the forums. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like my partner sometimes going around, I'm like, stay You see them. everything on Twitter that you'll see in a forum. Yeah, correct. And I've seen the toxicity. I've seen the comments yeah. on the results, the threads. Some of the yeah. fans obviously ping me on stuff and whatever. And I, I, I'm not looking to be pinged about coming by us or whatever else. I, yeah. I'm saddened to see it. Yeah. And that's a club that's, I've always said, is a fucking monstrous club. It's just a giant club. Do you know what I mean? Hence, you know, hopefully you'll be in better shape now. Yeah. Well, let's talk about you anyway. Let's yeah. talk about Mark well, Hughes. I do just want to talk, ask sure. you one thing sure. about um, Grant and the the importance of a strong assistant. Yes. And this isn't about Grant needing a strong assistant. It's just, it's interesting. You have some managers who don't really care who their assistant is yeah. and some who will bring that assistant Absolutely. with them everywhere. And I just wonder if you could talk he, a little bit about he, he, the he, importance he, of an assistant. Brilliant question. He wouldn't come without the assistant, mm -hmm. you know, and I didn't want him without the assistant. I knew the importance of that team. I'd seen them at Donny do shit to us and beat us in a game that I knew Grant would never have done the year before. Yeah. And whilst I was unhappy at the time, because we lost, there was part of me grudgingly respected it, because it was like win at all costs. 
And I always knew Darren and his staff always had aggro with Grant's assistant. When they came to our place mm-hmm. and beat us, it was the assistant, not Grant, that winded the fuck up out of them. Yeah. And I kind of, again, grudgingly respected that. He's like very Irish in his look. He was a defender, I believe, at Scunthorpe. He was old mm-hmm. school. Uh, him and Grant played together. I think they're on the same wavelength. I think they both have strengths and weaknesses that offset against each other in a good way. They've been through this journey together. They are a great pair. You know, I, Darren had that with Rooster back in early days. Yeah. I mean, they're a very, very good pair. Whereas Grant might not shout, this guy will, vice versa. Yeah. But most importantly, his assistant's a brilliant coach. And he coached young players at Sutherland. And he's brilliant with academy players. I did my own due diligence on this. And fair play to Grant, what I liked. While I was negotiating with his agent, with Jerry Maguire, which took like two and a half days, mm-hmm. Grant was ringing up our academy manager. He was ringing Liz. He was ringing people behind the scenes because he knew everyone at the club. Yeah. He was ringing those people, asking about what's Daryl like these days? What are yeah. the partners like? How's the work dynamic? What's the academy like? What's that coach like? What are these people like? I love that. He's Grant doing his own due ago, diligence. would never have done that. Yeah. Now, he was like taking his time and making sure this was right for him. Of course, he wanted the job because it's 20 minutes from his front door yeah. and ticks a lot of boxes. But also, he wanted to make sure it was the right job. And if it wasn't, he would have turned it down. And I respected that. He has his own self-worth and value. So, a lot of the things that were going on, I knew these people rang me straight away afterwards. Oh, by the way, Grant's just rang. I fucking knew it was going to happen. I even said to Liz, Liz, you didn't put him off, did you? Anyway? <laughs> <laughs> this is like, she's like, no. I was like, good. So I was like, but you didn't lie. And she goes, no, I told him the truth. So, I, you know, I respect that. So I'm really looking forward to spending time with Cliffy, to be fair, because I trust Grant's judgment. And he's had a great period with him. And I think now Cliffy's got to do a lot of traveling yeah. to come to the job, whereas before it was Grant always in Donny and Hull near mm-hmm. Cliff's place. Yeah, he did the traveling. So, and a big part of it is the family dynamic. I asked Grant about his wife, Kelly, you know, and his family. Was, she's she's an unbelievable mom like my wife. You know, everything's about, yeah. you know, the kids, you know, the, the, the house, the school, the, everything. I used to see her drop her kids at training two, three times a week. You know, is everything going to be all right with Kelly? You know, I know it's going to be near home and it's great. Yeah. You know, it's not always a great thing, but, you know, you're in a community now where results create crap yeah you, you walk know, you walk out your front door yeah I, I don't want my people kids, are looking at you yeah i don't want my kids like smashed on social media yeah. or whatever else so i was just like you know you check with kelly she's okay with everything your mom and dad you know they, they follow him on every game you know everything good there yeah absolutely he cleared it with his family i was like great we're good to go so whilst it was a quick process it wasn't mm. you know it was like from sunday through to wednesday night you're still thorough People were putting reports out on Wednesday he'd agreed a two and a half year deal. I hadn't got a signature yet yeah. on DocuSign. So everyone was like putting his head down. I'm like, Liz, this isn't signed yet. So I don't know why fucking people are doing it. So, but yeah, he was very thorough. So you're absolutely right. The assistant is so vital to a great manager. I think sometimes it's almost a, an insult to call an assistant manager an assistant. Right. I think they play such a pivotal role together. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That, you know, the great ones are a team, the great ones. You know, the, the, the not so great ones, maybe it's manager or assistant, but yeah. the great ones are a team. And I think if you look through history and football, the ones that are successful are always like a team. And that could be assistant, first team coach, it's a team, you know, mm-hmm. together. Manager always gets the accolades, gets the bigger pay packet, yeah. but they're a team. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it was interesting, you know what I mean? And, and, and yeah, so, so let's talk Bradford. All right. Bradford fans listen to this. And uh, my, my advice was, I'll be honest with you, after Darren left, I messaged you on Sunday, yeah. one day, and said, so, "Tell Ryan, if you're leaving a job with your youth coach, yeah. give Darren about six weeks and go get him. Yeah. Like let him have a breather, let him have a holiday. And I know the guy, I know the ex gaffer he'll be up for another job in six weeks. He won't want to stay out of football. Mm-hmm. And if you really want to get out of League Two and League One, he's your guy. Because if I bought Bradford, yeah. you know what I mean, he, and he'd have been out of work, yeah. I'd have brought him in because I know, you know what I mean, at that level." There's no, I know people question his championship managerial record, but at those levels, he's won promotions with us and Donny. You know, he, even even more impressive at Donny with less of a budget than with us. So I knew that club would be if Darren Ferguson went in there. But anyway, yeah, and I think, you ignored my advice and hired Mark Hughes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I think if Mark wasn't available, then that yeah. could have been a direction to go. Yeah. I think the spanner in the works was the so there was so much toxicity. So right. and the results know, we, haven't been good with the caretaker. No, so we had Mark Truman, who's the caretaker, and Mark Mark's got a job for life at the club. Sure. You know, he's 
he did very well in, in keeping us safe last year. Yeah. He's still only 34, 35 years old. Yeah. He's going to be a coach in the system that will continue to... But he's not a manager. No, nurture, but he's not a manager yet. So he came in as caretaker. We lost against Oldham, um, and it was an absolute train wreck of a, a game. It was an awful game. Sort of highlights. Yeah. Um, and then we had Harrogate on Tuesday, and we lost 3-1 to Harrogate. And now we've played Harrogate four times, and we've lost four times game. since uh, they came up. Yeah. Um, and so there were people talk again the toxicity of social media yeah they're after Ryan they're going after um, let's do well, the owner doesn't care because he's been hammered so many times yeah that's but that's probably I mean, water off ducks back for him yeah but fair I mean, play but he's thick skinned enough to take it I think it still impacts like you you can't turn yourself off completely from that if you care sure right and sure. so uh, people are talking about uh, boycotting the game on Saturday Shit. and uh, you know, getting out, the, bad. getting out the the flags and oh, getting out the banners and all There's this stuff. There's one thing about shit social media. <laughs> well, people are there with banners with your name on it, whatever. I mean, like, that'd be listen. That's it. Anyone listen, to posh fan, if you really, really want me gone, get a fucking banner out there. Because not only will you see me go over and burn the fucking thing, all right, whatever. <laughs> that's it. I am gone. If yeah. I saw a banner with my name like Dara out and a big fucking thing about, I'd be like, Do you know what? Fuck you. When you start <laughs> chartering the plane to, to, to take yeah, the, the banner. Stop. Listen, I'd have that fucker shot down. I mean, like the snipers would be in the corner. <laughs> so that's how bad it had got. So we really had to move quickly. Um, to, Shit. you know, when you think about the summer and no, the no, disconnect I get it, I get and everything. It, I get it. And so, Mark, uh, you know, we went through and. God bless Ryan through all this process. Yeah, and, and you know, this is something that, that folks don't see that you alluded to there is it's hard to step out into a community when people are looking at, people are associating you with their football club that's not in the position they want them to be. Um, and I don't think people either think about that when they're mm. saying things or they don't. Well, maybe they don't care. Maybe they think it's a way of getting to someone's head. You should be on a computer, they don't. Right. Very rarely did they have the balls in public to hit you. They might give you a boo in a crowd from a distance, but mm -hmm. no one's ever come up to me. Not once in 15 years and tried. But So, so Mark, so we went through, you know, uh, we had 150, 200 applicants, I think, for the job. You know, Ryan's doing his typical due diligence on a lot mm. of those. And then uh, Mark Hughes expressed his interest last Friday. Um, in the job, so um, you know, Ryan went and talked to Mark, and um, you know, he said how interested he was, and you know, the reasons that he was interested, and um, you know, I think it went fairly quickly from there. Um, I think there was maybe some surprise that he'd applied for the job. Uh, I, I have to say this: obviously, he, he applied for ours, yeah. which he would, because he hadn't landed the Bradford job. Yeah. So his agent doing the right thing, put him into us. Yeah. Like a lot of managers went into us. I have to say. And I have to give Mark Hughes massive credit. Whether it was our job or taking your job, and we didn't even speak to him or approach him, do you know what I mean? But I have so much respect for a manager who started the whole Man City thing with all that money, mm -hmm. who's managed Wales, who's managed at the top, top level some unbelievable big clubs to drop, put Bradford to the side, massive club, but let's look at League Two, to drop to League Two for fuck all money yep. compared to what he's used to. I have so much respect for that. And... I so hope it works for Bradford mm -hmm. because I like it. I like anybody who puts the balls on the line like that, who's had the career he's had, who doesn't need that shite, doesn't need if it goes wrong, it doesn't work. The respect levels I have, like, wow, through the roof. Do you know what I mean? Like, massively. So, never been a massive Hughes fan. I'm a Liverpool uh, yeah. guy. Um, you know, even as a manager, he's appeared very stern, very hardcore, but he's always got results. He's always done well where he's been. He's got a good team around him. To drop to that level financially, to do it, it's not about money. This is about Mark Hughes. This is how tough football is, by the way. People don't realise this. There's 72 jobs out there. And, I, you know, mm -hmm. you just, sometimes you don't get a chance again. Yeah. No matter how good you are, even if you won league titles, you, sometimes you just don't get a chance again. And he has obviously tried to get bigger jobs than yep. the champ. Bigger. Not us, not you, but bigger jobs. I would imagine he's been trying to get in every job that's come available. And probably not even got an interview. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes your, your star stops shining. Well, he hasn't had a job for three and a half years. Right. So you're out of it. Sometimes when you're out of it that long, it's a problem. Yeah. So for him to do this, massive fucking respect. I mean, he's putting his cojones on the table. Yeah, in a wheelbarrow. He's backing you know? himself, no, no, isn't no, he? No, I, I love the move. Mm -hmm. I do. I love the move. Fair play to the Bradford owner. Fair play to Ryan. You know, fair play to Mark Hughes. I do love the move. Now, works doesn't work. You can't knock the appointments his charisma, his reputation. If Bradford don't win four of the next five games, I'll eat my fucking dick and it'll mm -hmm. be a long snack. 
So I, I'd be astonished. And I haven't seen your fixtures, so I might need to look <laughs> at them. But yeah. just just because of the huge effect yeah. alone, I would imagine the players feel ten foot tall. Well, you know, I think the players really well received it, um, as you would imagine. You know, two fucking right, they fucking received it. Let me it, tell you right now, they should be bowing at his feet. Mm-hmm. You fucking joking me? It's funny how you know you, you see on social media and everyone's talking about there's going to be an appointment tomorrow and the names and it's all the usual suspects that are being banded around <laughs> from a name perspective. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. then all of a sudden Mark Hughes shows up on your doorstep. It's silence, respect. Um, so there was a lot of surprise. It's, I it's think. respect. It's respect. I mean, listen, it's it's that's probably your best appointment in how many years? Yeah, it's the biggest appointment. I mean, we haven't we've never had a manager with that track record. Are he's you? he's the seventh. Highest, he's taken the seventh highest amount of Premier League games as a manager wow. for any manager. For, uh, again, so much respect for Mark. And he's never managed outside wow. the Premier League. And, and, and I didn't see any because my stuff was gone at the same mm-hmm. time. What did he say in the press conference? What was his message? Why, why Bradford? You know, was he honest about that? You couldn't get any other jobs. He said that you know he's been out of the game longer than he'd hoped. Mm-hmm. Um, that you know, yes, some opportunities have come along, but they haven't been the right ones. Yep. Um, that what he really thrives on is a crowd. You know, he thrives on match day. You know, if he was going to drop it's a down, drug. then, it's a drug. you it know, that's that's one of the things that appealed is, you know, he could come to Bradford and, and still have that match day experience mm-hmm. that, you know, it, of course, is not a Premier League, but it can be, Are you, you, you know. With all due respect, if there's 17, probably 20,000 fans of Mark Hughes shows up in your ground, that feels like a Premier League. Yeah, there's going to be, you know, probably 18,000 there. Time, but 20,000 fans feels Premier League to yeah. me. Yeah, there'll be... I mean, I know this is going to go live after the game, but we're expecting 18,000 plus there because Mansfield have sold out as well. Wow. So it's going to be a good atmosphere wow. um, to welcome him to. And so I think that was one of the draws. Oh. Um, and, you know, you think about his That's... legacy and um, maybe well, he was a project. You're putting it on the line, and... by the way. I, I mean, know. I mean, it's brave. If you fail he doesn't in need least... money, does he? No. How big was his gaff and fucking all of you or whatever <laughs> that fucking Ryan went to? He doesn't yeah. need the fucking payday. No, it's funny. I think that he could probably heat the... Uh, uh, heat the pool, you know, at his house with the salary Correct. that will get in League Two. No, I love it. I love it. That's the that's the romance of football. Mm-hmm. I fucking absolutely like. I want this to work. Yeah, you know, I think the club needs somebody to show us the way. Sure. Um, and I think that that's one of the things he brings is, you know, he's obviously been there and done it, and um, he knows what good looks like. Absolutely. Um, so he can set the standards. How long has he signed up for? Two and a half. My worry there would be his release clause. Mm-hmm. Because if he starts winning, yeah. he w- he'll get a bigger job. But I think that's a no-lose situation. Yeah, listen. If he can give you six months of his best, help return your club around, yeah. give you ideas, and then he heads off into the sunset to a championship yeah. club or whatever else, okay, fine. But it'll also open the eyes to other managers. Like Bradford's a fucking mm-hmm. club that means business. And we've got our mojo back, which hey, is really uh, what we need more And it keeps anything. the fans quiet, appeases yeah. them. And, and, you know, look, you don't want to see your fans like so negged out and so like down the world the way it is and quick message to you know our friends in the Ukraine and anyone mm-hmm. out there with everything going on in the world I mean that's horrendous what we're seeing there um, the last thing you need is just hate and toxicity and violence and yeah. you know whatever else and I'm not the biggest pacifist like you are do you know what I mean at the end of the day but I just hate what's going on in the mm-hmm. world you know but uh, look we, Mark Hughes I, I'm part of me thinks yeah this is a good one this is a really good now I haven't seen enough of your team, your players, your recruitment and whatever else, but I'm not going to dig into the recruitment yeah. because it's remiss of me to do that. But um, you're definitely going to open doors to some good Premier League loans right. without a fucking doubt. Like next year, I would imagine four out of your 11 and your team will be Premier League mm-hmm. loans. That might be a good thing or a bad thing, but who knows. As With your talk- promotion, you don't care. As we've talked about in the pods, you know, you never quite know which way a loan signing is going to go, do you? But it will open doors that you are don't. available to us at the moment. And You don't. And it's not, you know, he's not coming in and, you know, all of a sudden he's going to have the biggest budget in the league. So he's still got to work around the constraints of, yeah. you know, the finances. Um, so he's not going to be buying his way to promotion. No, it's, no, 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 no. It's no, all no, about no, no. being smart and using no, and, the budget and, the best you can. And sometimes we all joke about give Pep Guardiola, you know, a Bradford's budget mm-hmm. or a Morgan's budget, you know, and I, you know, Pep's obviously the best in the world with, with, with obviously my man Klopp. What would they be like at a Morgan? What would they be like at a lower league club? And I... I can't call Bradford a Morecambe. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I just can't put it in the same bracket. But, you know, what would they be like lower down the pyramid? And I guess now you find that Hughes isn't quite in that calibre. But what's he going to be like with no budget? Right. Now we're really going to see what, was what really, it's like. What was really interesting is his, you know, the 
humbleness. Mm. Um, you know, well, he, I, I think that's his character. Yeah, I've met him. You know, mm. what I mean, like I, I can't remember where, but you know, he's a humble guy. It wasn't. I don't think he's. You know, we've had our managers who have come through the door telling us how lucky we are. To yeah, have yeah, 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 yeah. A bit of arrogance to them. Yeah. A bit of Mourinho to them. A bit of you know whatever else. Like no, he's he's not. The, the one thing about him Gra- is he's a hard worker. The Simon Graysons and the um, yes. Derek Adams of the world, who yeah. you know, we should be thankful we have them. I mean. He gave none, no air of that. I mean, he has a presence, but it was, we're all here to work together. I'm here to learn as well. Good. Was one did, of the you, did you say Derek Adams got a new job? Because I've Derek, been out of football the last couple of days. Derek days. Adams is back at Markham. Well, the good news is, Derek, you won't have to pay him. <laughs> well, I hope you don't have right. to pay him. you got to make sure that's you know how you do management terminations. So how does, you know, what's a typical process for, like, what does so contract So the typical process like would be, and if you haven't got these in contracts and anyone's listening, you need to put them in. If a manager in, in a termination contract would be, and I've terminated a few managers, so I've learned <laughs> over the years, you would put in there that usually you're paying them 12 months termination, but you would pay it over 12 months. Yeah. But you'd also put a clause in there that if they got a job in the meantime, you would stop paying them. Yeah. Or you would make up the difference between their new job and their old job. Mm-hmm. So say Bradford were paying Derek Adams 150 grand a year. Yeah. And say you got Morecambe on 100. That 50 grand difference you pay. Yeah. Yeah. But if you're paying him out, and he's still got a new job a week later. Yep. Well, that's no, happy that, days. That, that's, for him. that's not good for the club. Yeah. So these are the things you learn about contracts and how to do them. And this is why I always talk about you know everyone wants to be a director of football, everyone wants to be a technical director, everyone wants to. Be, you have to learn the little intricacies, the backside of the game. You have to protect yourself. Mm-hmm. So you're always gonna you got release clauses. You know, little things. We do the same. You know, like for our managers, you know, who come in. There's always a big release clause from the Premier League club. Recently, I decided we had to put an international one in there as well, just in yeah. case. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. the little things you learn as you go along, um, very important. Now, with my gaffer leaving, who just left, you know, again, that was zero. I didn't have to pay him anything. Mm-hmm. He resigned. A lot of time when people resign and try and do a mutual thing, you've got to pay something. Yeah. But we agreed he was released so he could get a job tomorrow. And that was what he asked. Well, some managers start to just basically ask to be sacked, don't they? So they can get paid off. Yeah. And my and big respect to DF, he didn't ask for that. He just wanted out and he wanted to be clear. And he wanted the, the end of this month, that was him. Mm-hmm. And whether he got a job next week, we can't ask for compensation. Yeah. You know, and vice versa, he's not asking for anything. And I understood. I got it. You know, and I, I wasn't going to argue about that because too much respect for him. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So that's how it works in the in the yeah. in the whole termination world. So it's interesting to see him go back to Markham, you know, um, Markham no, and relegations. No, it's uh, safe. It's safe. Yeah. It's easy. The reason he does well at clubs with no big expectations is because of the lack of pressure. Mm-hmm. You know, and he's probably a good manager deep down, but he does his best work when there's no massive expectation. Yeah. Hence the miracle at Morecambe last year. Hence how far are they out of it in League One? We got the table here, two points. No, oh, he'll keep him up. So bigger arena, struggle. Smaller arena, yeah. and that's respect. We're a smaller arena like Morecambe. So he would do better, you know, but big expectations, you know, you got to deliver promotions and league titles and big crowd and... Play nice football at the same time. Not going to happen. So, horses for courses, Mm -hmm. you know, but good luck to him, you know what I mean? And uh, Bradford are moving on, like we're moving on as a club. You've you've got to move on sometimes and, you know, you turn the page, you move on. And you can never, you can never fully know how an appointment is going to turn out, can you, when you do it? So there's always going to be some risk factors. You've got to hire the best manager in the world. And sometimes it doesn't work. And you've been through that the last yeah. few years. You hired somebody who won promotion last year from League Two. And it's been a fucking disaster. Mm-hmm. That's just the way football goes. I've hired Steve Evans, multiple promotion winner. And it just didn't work. Yeah. And he's a friend of mine. And he probably upset because he was you know, messaging all the owners about coming back. And it was just never going to happen. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, and you know, although he's a pal of mine and I want him to get good jobs and whatever else, he's not right for us. We're not right together. You know what I mean? And, and we, we, we knew that when we were working together. We're not right together. And, you know, that was the same for him with, with City. You know, there's just too much water that's that's gone under that bridge. I still think he made a mistake there. I understand it. He, uh, I understand it. And he showed up at Oldham. He bought his own hospitality ticket to show up at Oldham. Did he? Um, so that kind of kept the rumour mill going. Oh, fair play to him. Like, well, see, he wants to work. Yeah. One thing I'll say about Steve Evans is he wants to work. We talk about Mark Hughes, whatever. Steve Evans mm. wants to work. He will want to be a manager. And he's a good manager, and he will work. And fair play to him, you know, he's messaged the three of us and said, you know, even if you want me to take the club yep. for a month, a week, I, yep. I won't charge anything. I love the club. And even when the appointment was made, love the club, wish Grant all yep. the best. That's Steve, you know, he's... People have got him wrong. 
a lot of the times. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, but well, I get it with a Bradford. Well, thing. he's got a persona, and this is actually something that. The worst like, thing about it is, it's the persona built on the on the sideline. Right. From all of that. That's not Steve. You heard him on this podcast. Right. His podcast was the most popular podcast episode yeah. we've had. And I walked away thinking he's a different person. Correct. Than the person I thought he's he was. a different person. And if you spend time with Steve, if you have dinner with him, if you sit with him, if you listen to him, he's, he's a very good coach. He's a very good tactician. He's not a fucking idiot. He's not a shouter and a screamer. That's just what you see for 90 minutes on a Saturday. And that's just what gets him up for a game. That's not who he is. So, unfortunately, he's always tarred with that brush. Yeah, It's not fair. Do you, so, think, do you think he's trying to use spot psychology as a one-up? I just think it works for him. I think it works for him. But him and Reigns have a certain style. It works. Mm -hmm. When you've won 10 promotions, would you change? Would right. you change? If you made a million dollars every year consistently doing the same thing, would yeah. you change? No, you wouldn't. Would yeah. you fuck? You'd no do the need. same thing every year. Right. There's no need. Even if people picked holes in what you do, you wouldn't change. Still working for you. Correct. You know, and that, that's a key thing sometimes. Repetition's king. So, you know, if you're if somebody like... So if you're looking at a Mark Hughes who's sure. coming in, like what kind of due diligence would you do on somebody who has never managed at your level, who's taken a big drop down, that hasn't worked for a few years? My you first know. question to Mark Hughes would be, pick a, pick a team for the uh, Mansfield game. Mm -hmm. who, who's your 11? Now, if you really wanted the job, I hope you'd have done his due diligence before the meeting. If yeah. you couldn't pick the 11, you know, you're kind of like, Nigh. forget about what League Two's like. Forget about navigating that. I want to know what he knows about my players. Yeah. I want to know what he knows about the team. What's the formation you're going to go with? What's the style you're going to go with? Who, you know, who are you bringing in? What's the training going to be? Yeah. You know, you got fuck all budget here. You know, you're used to... It's like you, it's like landing a really, really beautiful woman who's been married to a billionaire. Mm -hmm. She's used to a certain style of life. Yeah. And suddenly she's fucking out on a Friday night with me or you getting fish and chips. <laughs> Do you know what she I mean? could ask so, for anything she wanted well, yeah. so it's kind of like what are you doing here <laughs> you know, what's, yeah. what's, what's the approach why are you slumming it with us so you know I'd, I'd want to know from you look you know what are your thoughts on the team what are your thoughts on young players what are your thoughts on what you're going to do on Saturday against Mansfield have you mm -hmm. seen Mansfield's form you know do you know what formation Mansfield play how do you prepare for games we don't have an analyst so what are you yeah. going to do about analysis who's going to do that for you all, all those questions you know we get to the summer how are we winning League 2 next year mm -hmm. Who are you bringing in? Are you, are you bringing in a load of United youngsters? Are you bringing in a load of Welsh youngsters? Are you, what are you doing? So they're all the things. I'd also want to test his response to temper. So yeah. I throw, uh, I'm, I'm like that in interviews. Yeah. I'll throw a little bit of a sideways one in and just see what the response is like. Because I, sometimes you need to be challenged. Mm -hmm. but I want to see how it's executed. You know. So yeah, that's it. Well, it's been an interesting week. Um, you know, we wanted yeah. to just uh, do this pod really as a as a yeah. wrap up of uh, all yeah. the things that we've. Uh, We've had over the last few days before you go on your trip. So. Well, let's hope Bradford and Posh get everything they deserve. Mm -hmm. Let's hope that the new managers get the time, the respect. They enjoy their journey. Um, you know, we only want what's best for our football clubs. Right. As much as we are frustrated, uh, I only want what's best for Posh. You want what's best for Bradford. And uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'm off to Dubai. I, I appreciate all your support. The people who still listen to the podcast, uh, cheerio. Yep, enjoy your vacation and we'll Thank be you. back soon. Cheers, pal. All right, cheers. Mm -hmm.